Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. We are excited to have Rob Boyson and Christian Johnson from ADP presenting on leverage data analytics from ADP to make informed business decisions. And as a reminder, we are recording this webinar and it will be posted to our on-demand webinar library for you to review again or share with anyone. And if you do have any questions along the way, please feel free to type them into the questions box and we will get them answered for you during our Q&A time at the end of our session. So now I'm going to pass it on over to Rob to kick off our presentation. Hey, thank you, Angie and everybody. This is Rob Boyson with ADP. I am the representative that managed the ADP Inovia relationship. Appreciate you all joining us today. Really excited to have you here. We're going to show you some really cool and unique things that we're doing, um, leveraging our data insights, leveraging ADP's um, payroll data that we leverage with, you know, have paying one in five Americans in the country here today. Um, but that being, before we get into that, I'd like to talk to you and maybe provide you a little information, detail a little bit more on the integration between ADP and Microsoft Business Central 365. So we're going to kick it off briefly with a minute and a half video here that really just shows you a little bit of the high level overview of the capabilities of this integration. So um, I'm going to kick off that video right now. It is critical for all companies to have accurate and timely new hire data. Select Quick Hire and enter personal, payroll, tax, and benefits information for the new hire. Our new hire, Steven, is successfully completed. Real-time integration listens for changes in Workforce Now and pushes them into Dynamic 365 Business Central. And here we see the new employee's information. Employee data that is updated in Dynamics 365 Business Central includes valuable information in the employee records. With a couple of mouse clicks, let's demonstrate the easy and intuitive GL integration. To create GL data, we enter the data set name and create the GL data. While the system is preparing the data, the GL status is in progress. Once the GL data is ready, its status is shown as complete. Now that the GL data is complete, We'll sync the data with Dynamic 365 Business Central. General ledger data in Workforce Now is easily, accurately, and securely synced to Dynamic 365. And this is just the beginning. With Workforce Now and Dynamic 365 Business Central, integrating your data, Flow monitoring your data, and Power BI displaying a full 360-degree picture of your data, you can finally move forward from administrative tasks to strategic decisions. And thank you for that all, for viewing that. And I um, wanted to just bring up that integration briefly up here for your viewing uh, pleasure. And as you see here, ADP and Microsoft have been doing a really good job here and, and continually developing this integration. Um, you know, as you see here, it's really right now to the point of connecting the GL journal entries and employee card, um, as well as time and attendance from the ERP. So um, we're working really hard and fast in developing that. But more importantly, you know, through that, um, integration, we bring to you, you know, a service relationship that's really, uh, you know, one that's beyond the, the industry leading and goes well beyond the capabilities a lot of organizations require, but it's something that's required in this industry nowadays. So through this ADP and Novio relationship, we're going to provide you just a reminder um, of any opportunity, a dedicated implementation team, dedicated service teams, along with the advanced technology. Um, and within that implementation scope, we're gonna provide you some historical data conversion. We're gonna provide you um, specific uh, training, specifically for your employees and managers, and a custom system configuration. And as well as we're gonna provide you some professional services client optimization. So we're gonna provide you in, in partnership with Inova, and Inovia's broad, broad scope of capabilities and ADPs as well under one umbrella to truly allow you to integrate these two systems, your HRIS, and your Microsoft Dynamics 365 environment. And what's that bring to you? When we're able to connect those two, um, next slide please, to the data cloud. And when we're able to connect these two systems, we're able to leverage a unique system here that provides you some vast capabilities from ADP Data Cloud. ADP Data Cloud 
was, uh, was is awarded in 2020, the AI Breakthrough Award of the Year, and in 2021, the Data Breakthrough Award of the Year. But in addition to that, data analytics and the importance of data analytics is now, is needed now more than ever for allowing our business decisions leveraged by data insights. You know, we need to make these business decisions leveraging these data insights to help move your organization forward. And data integrity, the data tool is only as good as the integrity of the data. And as I'm going to pass it off briefly here to Christian, this tool, I just want to let you know, is represented by over 27 million data sets of employees leveraged by a leveraging ADP's workforce now solution backed by over 190,000 organizations. No other data insights and analytics solution has such a vast wide array of data insights. So, you know, sit back. I want to provide the opportunity for Christian here to view, um, to demonstrate our award-winning data cloud capabilities and really what you know, we bring to the table by leveraging these data sets and what we can do by combining your HRS and ERP or Microsoft Dynamics 365 worlds together. Go ahead, Christian, the floor is yours. All right, well, thank you very much, Rob. And let me go ahead and move the screen over here. All right. So I know that Rob is the only one that could speak right now. Are you able to see my screen right now? Does everything look good? I see your right. dashboard screen. All right, great. So I just wanted to make sure. Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for your time. Really do appreciate it. Like Rob said, my name is Christian Johnson, and I am an ADP major accounts business consultant. So I'm the person that's going to be walking you through the data cloud technology today. So just to reiterate a little bit what Rob had said, ADP, what we have is data cloud, and that is our analytic reporting and benchmarking tool. So really at its foundation, what this is going to do is this provides our clients with a deeper understanding of their workforce by using charts to track information directly from their workforce now program in real time. So with uh, data analytics, you are gonna be allowed to configure dashboards, you can export chart details and even share information to members across your organization. So if you're in here as a practitioner, you can create dashboards, share and export information to other team members. So some of the uh, items that a lot of our clients like to use this for is to drill down into uh, things including overtime, absences, labor costs, and turnover rates. So basically, what you're going to have is all of your key metrics in one area to help you to observe some trends, make evidence-based decisions, and then align strategies with your company goals. So on the, uh, I shared my screen. Uh, hopefully everybody could see that. Uh, first thing I wanted to do is just kind of give you a quick overview of the uh, data cloud landing page, the portal that you're seeing here right now. So when you sign in and you go to the data cloud dashboard, the first thing that you're going to see here is going to be your analytics readiness journey. So this is going to help you to get set up. This is gonna walk our clients through a guided step-by-step -step experience to ensure that they're set up for analytics correctly. So that's gonna include everything from validating key metrics related to headcount and terminations, uh, to even setting up data cloud mobile access and verifying your organization's profile settings. So profile settings would be things like industry, revenue size, employee count, things like that. So down here below, you're gonna see a few other things too. One of those is going to be your organization snapshot. So these are pretty neat. What this is going to do is just at a high level, provide some insight into important business questions uh, regarding your workforce. So this is gonna include how efficiently you're managing things like labor costs, retaining talent, and also ADP product utilization, which is going to uh, consider, you know, how many people are actually using their self-service functionalities in workforce now. Um, and on the surface here, you're gonna see a few key metrics to address those questions. And if you would like to click into one of those, you can click view more to check out some additional details. So for example, here, if I click into cost control, um, I'm gonna see a few metrics related to earnings, headcount, and overtime. And then within each of those metrics, you can change the time frame and even adjust targets to see how you're measuring up against your goals. So you can see a few different things here. I always like to show the um, organization snapshot for utilization because it's gonna be important to see who's actually using their ADP self-service. This is gonna show you the people that have access to this site. So you can quickly see the percentage of employees with practitioner, 
manager or employee level access. And this is also gonna include a breakdown of the percentage of employees who use a mobile device or desktop to access the system. So using their self-service to go in there, depending upon your, your setup here with ADP to do things like view their pay stubs, their W-2s, review their benefits and request time off as well as potentially their time card information. So this is gonna let you know the product utilization in place. And now I'd like to move over to actually one of the analytical charts that we do have. Um, and I always like to show over time because a lot of the industries that I work with, especially those in manufacturing, as well as a few others, are of course, of course gonna be concerned with overtime and overtime cost. So if I go here to my dashboard, you're gonna see that I actually create a customizable dashboard here for myself. So this is gonna include some of the key metrics that are gonna be important to me, like turnover rate, labor costs, and total hours, as well as overtime. So if I go over here, up at the top, and I'm gonna click into overtime. So this is just one of the many examples of the metrics that we do have. And let's just take a second or two here just to load up. So if I click into that chart right here, you're going to see a few different things. Now for this particular one with overtime, what it's going to do is provide a nice breakdown. It's gonna be a month to month overtime percentage breakdown. And each one of these charts that we have, whether you're looking at something to show for absences, turnover rates, or like this one with overtime, every one of them is interactive. So if you wanted to drill deeper into your info, you can see I'm hovering over that. I can just click into that column and then that's gonna provide um, information from a different time frame. Let's say like instead of uh, monthly, it's gonna be weekly or daily. And you can even filter these results by a specific date range or just show your yearly totals. And over here too, you can add some filters as well. So if you wanna track something internally by department, K code or location, all you have to do is just select the filter from here. And then the report is gonna automatically shift its info based upon your choice. So obviously a lot of the companies out there uh, that do have multiple locations or de departments, they like this feature because it allows them to pinpoint some of those trends and build strategies for specific groups within their organization. And it also provides all of your chart detail as well. So I'm gonna click into that. And with your chart detail for this one right here, uh, particularly for over time, obviously the information is going to differ depending upon the chart that you choose. This is going to include all the statistical summary details related to overtime costs, total hours, and then employee count. And each one of these charts is going to include high level metrics by default, but you can also select employee de uh, details. So this is gonna allow you to view specific information from an individual employee perspective. And last thing at the top two is gonna be your benchmark information. So when I go ahead and I choose benchmark, you're gonna see kind of like this little squiggly line here for um, that's gonna be here in purple. So what this does right here, if I click into that, this is where um, you can view benchmark information across uh, industry, employee and revenue size, and even diverse geographic location. And uh, how that works uh, pretty much to kind of uh, reiterate what Rob had said is that our benchmarks are updated every calendar quarter and they are created using large scale anonymous data that ADP gathers from over 50 million employees across about 200,000 organizations. So it's not just some basic survey info and you can add your filters in here as well. So if you wanted to switch up your filters, you can go in here. This is where you can filter by various different things by revenue and employee size, employee count, and industry to get the information that you're looking for. Now, if you're looking for some bite-sized information, what we're going to provide for you is going to be your storyboard. So that's the next thing that I just want to show here real quick. Let me just go ahead and just quickly refresh my screen. All right, now we're in the storyboards. Storyboards right here, what these are going to do is they actually, they address common business issues by organizing relevant insights from various metrics and displaying them in a really nice little bite-sized experience that you can easily understand. So this is gonna help you to uncover potential problems within your organization that may go notice, unnoticed, which could uh, save you some time and cost. So one of the example storyboards that we have is 
the aging workforce storyboard. So from in here, a few different things you can click into. This is basically going to help you identify the need to prepare for an aging workforce by using a projected retirement metric to give insight into all employees with the potential to retire within the next five years, and then groups them into three key time frames. So less than one year, one to two years, and then two to five years. And now one of the other important metrics or storyboards I like to show is going to be pay equity. So obviously a uh, very important metric here for you. So we provide the pay equity chart. And again, this is gonna help you to stay competitive in your marketplace. This is going to allow you to see how your compensation for a particular job stacks up against others while helping you to, pay, to consider pay adjustments that are fair and equitable. So how this works is that it actually uses your EEO1 job categories that are defined in your workforce now system of record, uh, which is actually gonna be stored in an area called the statutory compliance section. So if you're already using ADP workforce now, you have the EEO details in um, the statutory compliance section. So those are metrics related to gender, race, and ethnicity. So we take that information to automatically identify potential pay gaps, the size of those gaps, and historical trends for groups of employees in uh, specific protected classes. So the first thing that you're going to see here up at the top is just going to be a quick company overview of the two main factors, which are, of course, gender and ethnicity. So this is gonna show the number of employees that are paid less than their highest paid comparative group in the same job and location. And by default, the dashboard will factor in all employees, but you can filter results to a specific company code, job title, or location. So let's go ahead and click this link and take a look at that. This is where you can go in here and you can drill deeper into those employees who are being paid less then their comparative group again for the same job or location. And then you can go in here and check out the individual employee details. And that's gonna help you to also examine other factors that may contribute to the pay gap like tenure and experience. So from there, you can assign a status and that's gonna alert all folks within a, a work group to, um, to view that, that pay gap and potentially make any sort of adjustments. So seeing this information, obviously very important, it's gonna provide the necessary info to help close that pay gap, which will not only help you to keep in compliance with the, the equal opportunity laws, but also help to prevent turnover, enhance your ability to attract the best employees, and then of course, increase employee commitment to your organization. And then speaking of staying competitive in the marketplace, we also are going to have your annual compensation explorer right here as well. Let me go ahead and roll up right here. So the annual compensation explorer, what this does right here is this is going to provide insight into average compensation based upon your industry while also allowing you to filter results by job title, revenue size, employee count, and location. And if you do wanna conduct the search with your own uh, company's job titles, we do have a tool to help match your company's jobs to ADP benchmark jobs. So that job matching tool, what that's going to do is let you to search for, review, confirm, and change your job matches. So let's just say I wanna go ahead and I wanna search for, let's say we're looking to hire for a shipping and receiving clerk. So now I can go down here and I can filter by industry. I'm gonna go ahead and let's just say, going with the same theme here of manufacturing. And I could add a few other filters as well in here. So I can filter by ownership types. This is gonna be for profit. And we can filter by organization size, whether it be revenue or employee count. We are an organization of one to 99 or 100 and 400 499 employees. So then I'm also going to add that we're looking for a full-time employee. Once I click apply, I can then go down here and I can filter by region. I can filter by region, sub-region, state, or micro-region. So I'm going to filter by state right here. So once I go ahead and I add all of my filters, just takes a second here for it to conduct its research. So once I choose my filters, you can hover over that area. I'm choosing Illinois here as an example, because I know that's where uh, Rob is at. So I'm gonna choose Illinois here. 
Um, this is going to give you that breakdown of median base salary and total compensation, which can factor in things like overtime. And you're also going to see the number of employees and organization ADP used to gather this information from. So why this is nice is because it's going to help you to, again, get that competitive edge and provide reliable insight into compensation market trends, which will then help you stay com not only compliant, but provide a way to attract and retain that top talent here for you. And then another uh, metric that I like to show here in our benchmark explorers is going to be turnover probability. So with turnover probability, again, what we're doing is that we're using millions of employee records to compile historical industry benchmarks and predictive models to help you see who is most likely to leave and why. So obviously turnover is, is very important across any type of industry. So this is gonna help you to kind of take a deep, deeper dive into that. So up at the top, you're seeing a few percentages over here. The first being your predictive, uh, your predicted turnover percentage for next year, followed by the current turnover rate, and then the suggested turnover rate for your industry and average headcount. So how this works here, we're going to view the turnover factors. And you're going to see that right here. So how we determine this and we set up who is most likely to leave and why is that our data science team actually identified key predictors that are going to correlate with higher turnover risk, what you're, what you're seeing here right now. So some of those items and, are going to... And, let me, and Christian, let me speak up to this point too, because you know what we're essentially sure. doing is we're taking, through a unified database here, we're taking you know the information we ca captured strictly from the employee demographic, right? And we're able to leverage that information for these insights. So for instance, you know one, one outlying factor, and there's really major three, seven factors here, eight factors here was, you know, distance of travel to the office. Something I never really thought about in my past life, but you know, as some employees that have a long commute to the office, you know, maybe uh, it'd be adverse to look for a job closer to home. So I really take that employee information file and bring that into those insights and capture that and deliver it right to you as a leader of the organization. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, our data science team, we identified, or they identified the key predictors that correlate with higher turnover risk. So that's going to include tenure, annual compensation, overtime earnings, uh, commute distance, and even commute time. So if you go back here to the turnover probability homepage, at the bottom right here, you're going to see the employees, managers, and jobs that have the highest turnover risk. So let's just say we want to take a look at one of these employees. We can choose Dale Cole here, just as an example. So if you click on an employee here, you can see the factors that brought them to this list. So for example here, you can see for Dale, quite a pay gap. He's been in this role for a little bit over 20 years and is being uh, compensated at a significantly lower rate, both internally and externally for this particular job and location, according to our benchmark findings. So again, you can identify um, some of these turnover risks. You can assign, um, you can create an assignment for an employee, alert the manager, and then, put the steps in place here to maybe help close that pay gap or to figure out a reason why um, Dale may be leaving and hopefully to prevent that. All right. And then second to the last thing that I would like to show here is going to be data mashup. Let me go ahead here and pull up so, my overtime cost. I'll go ahead, Ron. And what's unique here about, you know, I was just going to say in, in brief here, because I do want to leave maybe a few minutes for questions, but the data mashup is really unique work. As Christian is going to show you, we have the ability to bring information from outside sources into this data capture tool, and, and all the reports and everything that Christian's provided to you are readily and easily downloadable in a PDF Excel format with, with the graph and the screenshots you're seeing here today. So I just want to make mention of that as well, which makes it, very, um, you know, very convenient from a leadership perspective to provide these reports and share these reports amongst yourself. Yeah, thank you, Rob. And uh, data mashup, this is uh, somewhat of a, of a newer feature. So this is going to allow our clients to easily pull sales, financial, and workforce data, and then upload it directly into Workforce Now. 
what you're seeing here right now is just one of the uh, examples being overtime. So sticking with that theme here, this then creates a combination of two or more data sources in a single graph. So for example, uh, some clients can already see their current headcount by location. So then they can upload metrics to overlap with Workforce Now's info, which will then show how each location is performing. And then you also have the ability to overlay additional metrics like total hours, again, over time, all within the same dashboard view. So I actually uploaded a budget by location file. So this is gonna provide a dashboard to compare this data to info already be stored in the uh, ADP system. So for this example right here, um, this is just a test environment example, but this is gonna show a chart uh, where my overtime cost by location, and then it's gonna compare it to the uh, budgeted metrics in pink. And again, every single one of these charts is interactive. So if you want to drill deeper into the info, you can click into the column and it's going to provide data from a different time frame. And then above that here in data mashup, if I can scroll up here just real quick. All right, so let's get that nice map here of the uh, USA. So ADP also developed here, and this is going to be on the uh, the data mashup. Um, we're going to have the COVID-19 workforce impact dashboard. So that's going to display a map highlighting your specific work locations and the coronavirus cases by state. And we provide a workforce uh, impact template that's going to allow you to upload your data to help you answer questions like, you know, do I have employees or locations and virus hotspots or can my employees work from home? So it's going to provide a nice little uh, interactive chart and map here of your work locations. So again, you get to see the uh, head count, the COVID-19 cases, and the day since uh, cases on decline. And lastly, the, the best thing here about ADP Workforce Now and the data cloud is that all the information I'm showing you right here is also available on ADP's mobile app. So ADP's mobile app pretty much has all the same features as the portal. So not only is this where you're going in here again, to view your pay stubs, your W-2s, potentially your benefits information, time card info, but we can also loop in uh, the data analytics as well. So you're gonna be able to provide some of those insights. And we can also send you proactive push notifications. So for example, here, you're losing talent in Nashville twice as fast as the rest of your organization. So I can click into that and view those chart details as well. So this is gonna be a turnover rate chart that we're gonna provide to you. And if we send you those notifications, you want to share it with somebody, we make that very simple as well. So you can export those chart details, send it to different team members across your organization. All right. And with that being said, again, I know that I um, just wanted to keep everything high level. going to turn that back over to Rob and Angie. And if there's any other questions, you can just let us know. Thank you, Christian. And thank you, Angie. And Angie, I think we have a few questions maybe um, for the for the group here. Yes, we do. Uh, first, we've got some poll questions that I'd like to uh, launch up. So the first one is, how accessible are internal data statistics, such as overtime, turnover, and compensation? So if you could all uh, take that poll and we can get the numbers um, distributed. All right, it looks like we have a tie. 50% are saying uh, easy accessible and 50% have to run through multiple reports and systems. And then we have another poll that we have up. How important is pay equity? to your organization? If you could please answer that poll. All right, um, we have 50% that said very important and 50% that said that it's not a concern. Okay. All right, well, we do have a couple questions that um, came through. If anybody has any additional questions, feel free to type those in and we'll get them addressed. 
Um, the first question is, would the ability to access national job position salary averages data sets be beneficial to our organization? Is that a question for us, Angie? I'm sorry, I, yes. I, didn't, I missed that. Oh, yep. um, I, I would say yes. I mean, in, in my experience, I deal with organizations that are uh, looking for talent, that are re requiring talent. For instance, some organizations in the nonprofit industry also leverage this information for auditing purposes. Um, first and foremost, I think you, as a leader or, or a leader of an organization, you want to maybe be able to make sure that your positions are in line with the national averages, um, and and actually averages based on your geographical region as well. So these are great insights, and I will I will keep in mind the data that we're referencing is real paycheck history information. This isn't these aren't polled information. This is information that used autonomously through the data that we leverage with the you know 27 million employees that we pay and 190,000 organizations that have signed up for this program. So it provides you to leverage these insights to provide um, equitable means and competitive salaries to employees that you're trying to att attract to your organization. Okay, thank you. And another mm -hmm. question that came through is, would the ability to access financial data and labor data in a one data set be of value to our organization? You know what, uh, I've spoken with other leaders um, in, in some other instances, and I think, you know, what Christian just ended the demonstration with, with the data mashing, you know, most organizations in traditional world, the ERP was truly separate from the HRS, and they wouldn't necessarily know how time or cost centers would allocate down to the financials of the organization. Um, so they're, they're looking to leverage it more and more. Um, organizations that maybe don't leverage or utilize 365, um, Microsoft through the API connection, we automatically develop some um, custom reporting to the GL uh, or ERP of, of organizations outside of Microsoft 365. So in my opinion, it's becoming more and more of a common practice where organizations are requiring the HRS labor data connecting to the financial systems of the organization. All right, I think those are all the questions that uh, we have for you guys today. Thank you both Rob and Christian for presenting. Not a problem, thank you well, very thank, much. Yeah, thank you and thank you for the audience. And, and if anybody has any additional questions, would like to see other areas of the technology or um, speak to us further. We are readily available and be happy to speak to them. Your All right. Well, again, thank you everyone for attending. And if you're watching on demand, we thank you for taking the time out as well to join us. To let you know, we do have more webinars coming up. Uh, this Thursday morning, the 15th, we have Easy Stock presenting on leveraging inventory optimization for e commerce success. So check out our website for more of our upcoming events, and that's anovia.com slash events. And we have a podcast going on, if you have not heard of it already. It's called the Anovia Conversation. And we just want to encourage you to listen to the selection that our hosts, Steve Waltz and Jeff Progolski, have provided to us. And you can find out about all the different podcast platforms to listen to on our podcast page, and that's novia.com slash podcast. So check out the selection and subscribe so you'll get notified when those new episodes air. And we have started a new round of training workshops for you and your team members to attend. Visit our training workshop page at novia.com slash workshops for more information and to register for the training workshop that fits your role. All right, thank you again, everyone. And we look forward to seeing you again soon on another Anovia webinar. Take care. Thanks, guys. Thank you all. Take care. Have a thank great you. Day.